Hi everyone, my name is Romero Solorsno. Uh, we'll be covering learning objectives and course description. I am Senior Manager at AICES. I am joined by my colleagues here, Barbara Reed, she's a licensed architect, and Luz Toro, she is also an International Associate um, Architect. So, uh, welcome all, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, this is the hopefully quick and to the point. So submitting your courses. So when you submit your courses to us, uh, you know, we ask for the title, course number, all the, per all the uh, relevant information. What we're going to focus here now uh, is the course description and the learning objectives here. And just so you know, it's not, when you submit your courses to us, it's not just necessary for us for AI review or to get your credit your uh, credit designation approved, but also for our our members, our members and our architect um, arch our architects, they see your courses, they see everything you submitted. So it's up to your benefit to have well developed course description and learning objectives, uh, so that you know because it's 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 a it's public information. <laughs> so let's start. First, let's start with the learning objectives. So let's begin with what is not a learning objective. And bear with me for those of you who already know this, but I feel like we have to mention this. Learning objective is not, is not the title repeated, is not the course description repeated, is not the same as other learning objectives. You can rearrange the words a little bit and make it seem like they're different. We will return those. Uh, it's not the outline of course not the CV the speaker, it should be precise, and it shouldn't leave with questions. You can start with questions, but an uh, architect learner should not leave with questions after your course. Uh, what is what we look for for a learning objective? It should be measurable or observable outcome. It should be concise, precise, using action verbs, and define what the learner would know, do, or understand. Uh, let me emphasize using action verbs. This is really important to help you, guide you in how to develop your learning objectives. If you don't get anything from this, from this webinar, the biggest thing I want to take away is learning objectives, the expectations and goals for a learner to know, do, or understand. That's the biggest thing that I want to take out of this because as architect learners, we uh, uh, the biggest thing we want to know is, am I going to take leave the office to take this course, what is relevant, implementable to my practice as an architect? Um, this is the biggest thing that's for the architect learner. So using action verbs are really important to help you guideline in developing your learning objectives. And let's go really quickly, <coughs> excuse me, Bloom's taxonomy. Why do we care about Bloom's taxonomy? So for those of you who are already instructional designers, bear with me because you know this inside and out, but Bloom's taxonomy, it is classification of thinking orders, right? The thinking orders, when you, the higher levels you get into academia, you get into the different more scholarly things, for the purpose of AI CES, we're not going to get that high. We're, we're, we are professionals looking for professional development. So, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, when we're looking at Bloom's taxonomy, different levels establishes, this helps you guidelines on the verbs that they use at different levels, and it helps you establish the exchange between instructor and learner. So what I mean is, again, why do we care? Because the verbs, the action verbs you use in your um, learning objectives, guide you on how you, the instruction and delivery, and in terms, helps you meet the expectations of the learner. So again, it may seem complicated at first, but um, bear with me uh, with some examples here. As we look at some examples, it'll, be, it'll get a little more clear. So let's start with the first example. Uh, learners will be able to estimate labor and equipment costs on projects, enabling the project manager to allocate adequate manpower and equipment to the project to keep it on schedule. 
allowing the owner to take possession of the building on a schedule and <laughs> schedule and on budget, right? So what we look for, measurable, observable outcome. Let's see. Uh, uh, so keeping on schedule, right? As an architect learner, I know that after this course, I will be able to maintain a schedule. Concise and precise. It's all one sentence. We're not looking for huge um, paragraphs here. One learning objective, I should come out with a learning outcome. Actionable verbs. So I know that allocate, estimate. I will know that I would know. I will, I'm going to understand. Um, understand how to estimate cost, allocate manpower, and keep on schedule and a budget. So again, this is a small, like one sentence but I know exactly what I'm going to take away as an architect learner that I can implement to my practice as an architect. Let's see. Here's another example. Learn ways to improve student engagement without changing teaching methods by using design and color. Now, this one, measurable, observable outcome. So using design and color, honestly, all design professionals use design and color. Uh, concise and precise. This one's a little vague. Action verbs. What am I going to implement that's relevant to the practice of architecture? It's, it's very vague. And again, as an architect learner, am I going to take time away from my practice to learn about improved student engagement? Ways I can improve this learning example, learning objective, well, it's not really a learning objective right now, but uh, ways to improve learning engagement, maybe a design technique that they may, might be using to implement in the design, maybe uh, something, anything more tangible that I can implement today as an architect learner. So again, this is an undeveloped learning objective. Uh, here's another example. Compare and contrast the characteristic of acoustic glazing to other glazing materials. It's a good start. However, measurable outcome or observable outcome, non-existent, concise and precise, it's a little vague because acoustic glazing in, for example, in hospital settings, in concert, concert hall settings, or even in residential settings. How is this relevant to, let's say, if I was uh, a residential architect or uh, designing a concert hall? So things a little more precise in, the, um, in this learning objective would help. Uh, and what am I going to take away? What are action verbs that I'm going to take away from this course I can implement to, the, to my practice? And let's look at one more example. Complete simple calculations of occupant load and exit capacity to apply fundamentals like safety principles and the means of egress. So, this one, short, to the point, I know that as an architect learner, I will attend this course, I will learn simple calculations, and I can apply it to my life safety and means of egress in my designs. So just to give you, <laughs> just to give you a, uh, a broad overview, so to just remember that Learning objectives to expectations of the goals of the learner needs to know, understand, or do. Uh, again, as an architect learner, we look at the uh, we look at these not just from AIA point of view, but also members who will decide who um, whether you know look, looking at your course. What am I going to take away that's relevant, and implementable? So for now, let's see if we have any questions before I move on to course description. And it doesn't seem like we do. All right, I'll move on. So uh, course description. So again, course description, there, we're not as prescriptive as we are with a learning objective. Course description is completely depends on the, the course itself. So Again, we, some of these, it may be common sense, but bear with me. Uh, course description is not the title repeated. 
not the learning objectives repeated. They're not bullet points. They're, there's not a CD of speaker. They're not questions. Again, it can start with questions, but it shouldn't leave without questions. And it doesn't have to be a novel. It can no more than a thousand characters is, is enough. Um, just a broad overview of what the course is going to be. <clears throat> what the program course description is a summation of what the program is about. Uh, level of knowledge, let's say if, if your target audience are more seasoned architects uh, or more uh, uh, emerging professional. So, you know, have, have an, an idea of what your target audience would be, which is helpful. Evaluate programs, whether it suits the, the needs. For example, if I was a healthcare architect and you're doing acoustic glazing for concert halls, that course is probably not for me. So, uh, balance between too much and too little information. That is completely up to the provider or the content expert. So that, you know, that's something that we, that um, you will just have to know. And here's some good examples. Uh, concrete material, choice for tallest building. A better one, you know, uh, bendable concrete, smog eating concrete, more characteristics of what the course will, will cover. Uh, nearly 5,000 years of development, uh, technology with the concrete. So again, balance between too little or too, too much information. You can combine these two, and it could still be a good uh, course description example. And it's still, you know, relatively short. Uh, so this is more broader. This is not, this is more of how you want to describe your course, how you want to uh, appear your course to members or architect learners. And here's a course, another course example, biophilic strategies in a classroom. A better one is what about biophilic strategy in the classroom? How am I going to implement this? Uh, and learning spaces, biophilic design, and contribute to student stress and improvement. So again, this is a little better. Um, and one sentence course description is probably not the best idea. And uh, I think that is it. That's what we are covering in the learning examples. So uh, just to wrap things up, course learning objectives. You want using action verbs, learning objective set is expectations for what the learner will take away from your course, what you want your learners to know, do, or understand, and the course description. It needs to encompass an overall overview of the course. And again, this is really short and sweet. Any questions so far that we have on, on Q? No questions so far. Well, let's see. Here's one. Uh, I want to submit a nano course. When I fill out the information, such as course description at AIA, do I also submit the PowerPoint in a video presentation? Uh, <coughs> not necessarily. So you, when you submit your course, you, we, you fill in all the fields that we ask. We only ask for presentations or PowerPoint if, if we ask for it. But when you when you first submit your course, go ahead and submit it as uh, all the fields that you, uh, all the fields that we asked for. And uh, I think that's it so far. For any further questions, please email us at ces.ai.org. We'll answer your questions there. But again, this is a brief overview of what we look for in the learning objectives and the course description. Really quick. So. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate you folks taking time up for us and uh, enjoy.